Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. This is a special show that's happening at 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Pacific time. We're going to go out to Pacific time first, Joe, since you may have to leave earlier than the rest of us. But we are in the midst of uh, the Youth Voices Summer Program, which has 18 young people and six teachers. And the six teachers stay late on uh, Mondays and Wednesdays to talk about teacher things. Um, and so we put them all in a single room, <laughs> and, and we're all talking here. Um, and Karen has uh, written a really, Karen Fassenpower has written a really nice summary of our thinking so far, and yeah, we're going to get to know each other a little bit and try to start making connections and talk about youth voices and some ideas for building curriculum. And Joe just left us. Oh, then no, you're so there. So, Joe, do you want to introduce yourself first? Just sure. Um, uh, Joe Paraiso. Um, I teach at Fremont High in East Oakland. Um, currently hanging out from the park in Berkeley. My highs are going all over the place. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and I've been on Youth Voices. This will be our second, third year. Third year, like coming up. Third year, yeah. I guess. So, looking forward to any collaborations. Right. And specifically, um, what what students will you be teaching next year? I have about. Or in the well, fall. I have, uh, yeah, in the fall. Oh my God, I have uh, all seniors. Okay, and you're also you also work with teachers in your building as well. Oh yeah, Is that true? yes, <laughs> the adult learners in our on our site. Yeah, I work with a lot of. <laughs> yeah. So I don't hear that. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> All right. It's like fun. Uh, what, what? <laughs> yes. So, Christy, keep talking. Introduce yourself a little bit. Hi, I'm Christy Kingham. I'm co-facilitating Youth Voices this summer. Um, I teach 11th grade English at uh, Young Women's Leadership School, Astoria. Um, and I've been working with the New York City Writing Project for a few years as a coach for the Summer Institute, just for teachers. Um, this summer is my first time getting to work with students doing some similar work um, that we used to do there, but bringing it all online and connecting. So I am enjoying myself so far, and um, it's been a pleasure working with all the teachers who are on here as well. Good? <laughs> You're muted. You're you're muted, yeah. Paul, but I can hear you asking a question. <laughs> I, and it's off. And we're entertaining one. So what grades will you be teaching, did you say? Oh, um, I teach 11th grade English. And I'm also an instructional coach for other teachers at my school. So I have a, a reduced schedule for that. Gabrielle, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Gabrielle Edding. Uh, I've been teaching in, in the Bronx for the last five years. I was teaching grades 10 through 12 and also coaching teachers, uh, both English and other subjects, on literacy. Although next year I am making a big change and I'm moving to a school in Queens where I will be teaching ninth grade and twelfth grade. And I've been involved in New York City Writing Project for I think this is about my second year. I've been to the Teacher to Teacher conference and done a couple of other workshops and seminars. Cool. We're just going across um, one way or the other here. Um, Glenn, Cora. Cora. Yes. Um, I teach English, 9th and 10th grade, at International Community High School. So all my students are English. Oh. They're English language learners. And there are a couple right down here. I guess they don't know who they But um, Glenn, oh, there you are. You're back. Oh, did I disappear? Yeah, you froze for a second. But go ahead. Uh, well, I was just saying I teach 9th and 10th grade English, all ESL students, and... Um, that was about it. That was my whole summary. So. Cool. Jim? Hi. Um, I also teach at International Community High School, um, English, ninth and 10th grade. Um, and I've been teaching, this is my 12th year. And how, we have uh, five of your students with us, is that right? Yeah. This summer, too? There are actually yeah, five which, of Cora's students. Five of Cora's students, yeah. okay. Which is really cool, having um, that 
representation in the room. Um, uh, you know, and then when you guys go back, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But um, Julie. Oh, hey. Um, my name is Julie, and I've been teaching for the past couple of years. I last year I taught tenth grade. Um, in the fall, I'm going to teach ninth grade, tenth grade, and twelfth grade. Um, actually, my ninth and tenth grade students are struggling readers, struggling writers, and then my twelfth grade class is going to be an elective, a gen ed elective. That's the the Latino. That's the Latino yeah, that's the Latino American literature class that I have yet to create that I'm um, work, working on fully. Cool. Thanks. Luis, you'll have to unmute. OK. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> it's my turn? Yep. OK. I'm Luis, and um, I teach ESL at Cobble Hill School of American Studies in Brooklyn. Um, and I also teach a. Uh, graduate course for teachers at Long Island University and I just finished my 10th year and I did the writing project spring satellite seminar eight years ago and I've gone to conference I've been involved a little bit ever since very cool and Raven um, hi I'm Raven I just finished my first year teaching at Voyage to South Preparatory High School uh, in South Jamaica Queens <laughs> Thanks. It's, um, it's a transfer school, so I don't teach a specific um, My students are between the ages of 16 and 21, and um, I was actually recommended into, um, to fill out for this program by Lona uh, Jack Vilmar, who is my mentor. And she's really awesome. She comes into our school, and she helps me plan and work on becoming a really good English teacher. Very cool. Welcome. And Karen. I'm Karen Fastenpower. I uh, work mostly in informal learning spaces of various sorts and try to hang out with writing project people whenever I can. And I do a lot of sort of sideline support for Youth Voices. And was at the summer program last year and loved it. Had a You had a great time. You froze there. There you go. It came in. See, I told you that was right. No, sorry, Karen, you froze there for a second. But, um, all right, so Karen, um, and, and I'm Paul Allison, and I teach at uh, New Direction Secondary School. Um, and um, I'm angling, I'm hoping, uh, then they promised me that I'm going to be in a classroom longer with students, maybe all day, so um, teaching various subjects. So that's what I'm aiming So, um, we have brought you here together <laughs> to have um, some introduction to how we work together on Youth Voices. Um, you've, we did spend some time on Monday talking about missions. And uh, remind me, who was it who created a mission around the animation thing? I think Louise. Louise, OK. Louise, do you want to? Um, and, and so uh, that's one place to start. but. As, so you guys have some sense of what missions are, and you should ask questions about that, and we can talk about that process of creating those, using those. But the bigger question that we've been, I don't know if it's bigger, the other question that we've been asking um, on shows like this with teachers from Youth Voices, and Karen's been helping to coordinate um, some of the thinking around, is could we put together a unit of study a MOOC, a, an online course where, so for example, the Latino literature course. What, yeah. if, could, could we co-plan that with other teachers um, in different places who are doing that also and there would be enough coordination between the teachers so that when the students post on Youth Voices, for example, um, it makes sense to them. They know, you know, they've had similar kinds of experiences. I think that's one way to think about it. Karen, do you want to introduce the thought? Sure. I mean, I think that was a good summary. I mean, but part, part of the idea was also to sort of, you know, missions are usually fairly short, to, so, so to look at sort of a, a longer time frame um, and somewhat 
synchronous so that people, you know, different classrooms around the country would be coordinating to to do like at least within the same time frame, not exactly at the same time. And some of that's already sort of happening on Youth Voices with different classrooms collaborating. And so I guess it's just to think about like planning that to be a little more formal so that more people could participate. Well, how would you find out? Like, let's say I'm teaching this Latino American Lit class. So how would I find out? Are there other teachers teaching it? Or it seems like at this point in the year, most people already have a set curriculum either given from their school or the, that they already said they're teaching. So how would that work in terms of, you know, finding out who's, I guess, finding out who else is interested or who's available or who, who's teaching something that a unit or a course that might be similar to what you're teaching? Right, so one thing we could do is I, this afternoon I could put up a page that just is an open page for anybody to post units that they're doing that they might approximate time frame. We just have everybody post and see if some commonalities pop up. Yeah, um, but Karen, can we talk, it goes further than that though too. So let's say we already have the course created, right? How do, we, how do people know that it's there? You know, I mean, CL right. Move spends a lot of time. Kind a lot of, of marketing. Yeah, so there needs to be marketing around. The right. Who do these kind of things are on social media, so we would certainly push it out on Twitter and Facebook. We could push it out through writing project sites. Um, you know, everybody who's on Youth Voices can talk to other people and just, I mean, as many ways as we can. Because I do think there's an issue of like having a critical mass of people. It doesn't have to be massive like MOOCs, but I think these things work better if there's enough people that there's kind of some really active conversations going on. And that does require, you know, some mass of people. Mm -hmm. Well, some of our schools, like ICHS is part of the Internationals Network, and they already put a lot of work into sharing form, but it's not always that useful. So I wonder if, like, pairing up with another group that's already trying to do that, and I don't know how that would work exactly, but some people have already started it. So I think that's a great idea. Um, I was a part of a thing called Deeper Learning MOOC that Internationals Network was a part of, and it had, I think, 12 or so different networks of schools um, that were all doing sort of project-based inquiry stuff, and we could probably get them to push this out too. It's a great idea. Say more about where that work is shared now, though. It's called iShare. I mean, one thing I like about the idea, too, of having like multiple networks is that might help think about like targeted audience or classrooms for some of these units. Like I know you were saying they should be applicable to whoever, but there's obviously some things that work better for L's and some that would work better for non-L's. Um, there's a website called iShare, and I know that the network reaches out to teachers for like unit plans and handouts and various resources. Mm -hmm. But then it's kind of I don't know. I haven't found it that useful to take from it yet, but I would like to find it more useful in the future. So, the re I, and and I have obviously no desire to critique their work at all. But I I just what I want to avoid is, you know, a year from now us saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I think missions are already that way to some degree. It's like, yeah, there's some cool missions there, but do people use them? You know. How do people take from them? And then the idea of, of, I mean, we've already touched on it, but let me just identify it. The idea that I'm in a network that already shares, or I'm in a school that I'm trying to get you know, colleagues down the hall to do the same thing. So those kind of local things, in these larger network things we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that was wasn't the question, but so, so yeah. I guess I, Cora, can you say a little more about why it's hard to share or hard to use this stuff that they that's put up? It there? occurred to me when I was doing the search for missions yesterday too, like the keywords, like my sense of what keywords attached to my mission might not be what Raven would ever search for. So maybe even if we are doing the same thing, 
you know, if I didn't write Kurt Vonnegut in my or whatever, she wouldn't know that that was the author that we were both interested in. And sometimes it's much more subtle than like, the author. It's some um, theme that I would phrase differently than she would phrase. And I think part of what I encountered with the you search by like English, and it's like there's so much English stuff that you either have to commit a lot of time to like opening PDFs and seeing if it's at all connected to you. And then once you find something, it's like there's no directions for it. It's just like, here's the packets I handed out. And to me, you know, other teachers or even official curriculum about how I go from those materials to implementing it. So it's sort of a combination of searching and then when I get it, knowing exactly why it was successful for that teacher. Use something like this, or questions you might have about it. Um, can I? Can I just? Yeah, um, go ahead, some, Something I just thought of when Cora was talking. Um, on the Teach website, it's it's videos of teachers from I think it's PBS, the Teach Channel website. They do they do have so you know they have a video of the teacher doing something, and then there's this like backline, and it's all of the plan that goes along with it. Um, so it just popped into my head that that might be useful to have. Um, I know like that we like to be transparent, especially with youth voices um, for students, but there are some things that they don't have to see um, in terms of the nitty gritty and how you're implementing a mission in your classroom. Um, so maybe I don't know this part of youth voices yet since I'm relatively new to it in this way, um, but it just, made me, it just made me think about that sort of like back channel aspect. Does that make sense? Or whoever? Are you talking about the teaching channel? Yes. Yeah, I've seen some of those videos too, and I like that there's you actually see the teacher delivering it, and I feel like that gives me a better sense of what it looks like in the classroom instead of just reading it off a piece of paper. Yeah, I right. think that makes a lot of sense, just to be able to see the classroom and see the teacher and what, what's really happening. If video is involved with the direction, that would be awesome. Yeah, and, and even... In, even if if not just video, video is an option, but like that behind the scenes portion um, is so helpful. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make it universal, it's like, and then a whole bunch of people could say, oh, well, here's how I do this. Um, and I don't know where that would happen on Youth Voices as it is at this time. Maybe it's, it's a block, it's, well, I don't know. <laughs> well, if we, did, if we did a synchronous sort of thing with a group of people together, we, we would probably have hangouts like this and just talk about what does this look in the classroom, what did you do, and then I guess that could be archived off. But I think there's a real advantage to, you know, it's hard logistically to figure out a unit that enough people are doing at the same time, but there's something about doing it at the same time that really gets energy, like you're doing it right now. And I think when you're looking at an archive of stuff, like it really looks really good, but if you're not, if that's not what you're doing right now, it's easy to kind of, you know, go on to something else. Yeah, just to address your question, there isn't a place really to talk about how this stuff gets used on Youth Voices right now, um, like that. But yeah, but I'm with Karen. I'm with Karen. I think what we want to do, I, and just to restate it, I think what we want to do is be in connection with each other, agree on a, a certain amount of material that we're going to work through, and then just connect and, and say, this is what worked for me, this didn't work for you, kind of thing. Um, I mean, and, and referring back to Luis's um, animation mission, I think you created it. And, and the reason I'm bringing it up is, and as you're unmuting, Luis. Also, I think I think it froze a minute. What was there the you question? Go. Paul, you need to. Am I am I okay? <laughs> okay. Um, so what I, what I was asking is if you could describe how it was for you making the mission, um, and I think it looks more or less complete. I don't know if you feel that way. Yeah, I um, all I did was cut and paste it from a rubric I had done to grade it when I assign it next year. So I designed it for an introductory thing, and I just put 
I just cut and paste from a Word document, and it's a three-day project, maybe. Mm -hmm. Short. But all right, but so so. It seems to me that in a unit where I mean we've just gone through it feels like longer, but just three days of of um, working through building a profile, right? Which is about identity, which is about self, which is about telling stories, but it's also about using multimedia. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems to me like your mission would fit into that, right? Yeah. So so the que the, so the question has to do with working, like. So when I come to look at this and, and I look, do I want to do the, the, the four um, photos mission? Do I want to do the six word memoir or do I want to do um, your, what was it called? It's a, How to. Yeah. Um, do I want to do that project? It seems to me like those are similar. Yeah. They're, they're doing with images and, and self and. And words. But I thought how turn was more it seemed like at least the way you, Louise, you were presenting it, it was more of like showing the plot of a story or focusing on like what characters say in a story. Or was that just the example you gave us? That's what I used it for this year. Um, it was an artistic um, task in reaction to a piece of literature. But I thought for next year, it's easier to introduce a new form of media with something. Where there's the content is you, where it's you're writing about yourself. So, so you're in the, the media. Yeah. yeah. So for the beginning of next year, every student will make one about themselves, and then when I ask them to do it about a piece of literature, they're familiar with the software. I got it. So, and I want to jump on that, right? So I just because I, because we need something that we can build together. That feels like a really good thought, and and some. Some of the thinking that we have behind what we've been doing together, like writing about self, is a, is an important place to start for a lot of reasons. But part of the reason is it then allows exploration of different media, right, um, and, and so forth. Um, so, <laughs> and that doesn't take six weeks, or does it? Like, so, so let me say, let me ask. So, those of you right here now. Can you imagine, or what what would be helpful for you, so that you could know exactly like what you're doing on Monday, you know, when you're when you're planning, and then and then so that we're all kind of coordinated together. Or is there a better way to ask that question? In reference to the online course. We lost you. You're back. So I'm so, like I'm like your little checker over here. I'll, thank I'll you, thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. So what I'm asking is, and I, I want to get off and, and see if you can uh, um, think about it with me. But so how how could we put together a course? And and um, Don Reed up in uh, Michigan is interested to work on this with us too, so that it could be about building a memoir. I mean, I'm sorry, a, a bio on a profile on Youth Voices. But we really think about the different possibilities, yet at the same time kind of choose something to do together and share that quickly with each other. But that, would that be a course, or would that be the beginning of a course or a mission? Because that seems like it's not six weeks, but am I wrong? Yeah, it's not six weeks probably, except that, you know, I don't know. If you're only able to do this 45 minutes a day twice a week, it could be six weeks. You know, right. that's what gets tricky. Right. Um, well, and ideally, yeah. I think this course is, whatever it is, is set up in a way that people can pick and choose. And, you know, we, we've talked before about the idea. Our right word, but where you'd have like you're starting the course so here are you know six word memoir or whatever the options are I'm muted am I muted no nope. you're good we, we, heard, we heard it it was just a brief pause maybe we could think of it as like a launch unit mm. so 
especially if you're working with just examining the self and not working with like a specific text yet. Um, it could be something that we agree to do at the, like the first two weeks of school or the first whenever you introduce your unit. Yeah, what do other people think? That makes sense to me. I think that's a great idea. Like, like if asked for the first time, the most the easiest way to do it is just have them talk about themselves, not a piece of literature. So it's a good starting place. What I like about that is that it uh, it opens it up for um, comments immediately in the beginning of the year from people all over. Um, and that commenting is such an important skill to begin at the in the beginning as well. Begin in the beginning. Uh, <laughs> um, so, and and that's like a an easy way into that. We did it this morning, and I feel like being able to comment on uh, personal narrative um, right away is kind of emotional, and it makes sense. But but it could be the unit could be structured, or the units could be structured as such that if people want to then continue on to the next step. It doesn't just have to be personal. It could be the next step is what um, are you going to build on the, the commenting um, by doing close reading together. Um, 